So I realized today that this might be the first time I've ever had a conversation with someone who also has one hand. <gasps> what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is amazing. Thank you, Krista, so much for being here. This is wonderful. Do you want to just jump right in? Let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Tell me a little bit about your little one. Uh, my little one is named Sona. She's two and a half, and she's the best. I mean, that's all there is to it. <laughs> I'm Erica. I live in Waterloo. I'm an engineer, and so is my husband. Uh, and we have two kids. Our daughter Eloise is four and our son David just turned two. So hi, I'm Mandy Persley. I live in San Diego, California. And this is my daughter Kaylee. She's eight years old, so she's not so little anymore. Um, Kaylee is just super creative and funny and very confident in herself. She's also really good at finding loopholes in everything that I say. So I'm pretty sure she's gonna be an amazing lawyer one day. <laughs> So I have, uh, I have Scotty, he is 30, and I have a son named Joshua who is 29, and then um, I've got uh, Ellen Evan who would have been 15 this year, and then, well, 16 this year, and Hannah who is 14. When you were thinking about starting a family and coming into parenthood, um, did your limb difference come into that decision at all or did you not think about it much or how did that play into your decision to become a parent? Well, you know, actually I had done a lot of babysitting um, when I was growing up, so I felt pretty confident in my ability to take care of a child with one hand because um, I'd already done that before. Um, you know, I think interestingly enough, the biggest thing that came into play with my limb difference was that um, Earlier in my life, I had never gone out in public without a prosthesis. Um, I had always worn a cosmetic prosthesis. Um, and so because of that, it was kind of my security blanket, you know, because I really don't like when people stare and stuff. That was hard growing up. Um, so, but you know, it's, it's hard to hold a baby when you're wearing a prosthetic. You know, it's much easier to hold a baby like this than if you've got this, you know, hard, stiff thing just, you know, sticking out into the air. So I felt like I, I needed to stop wearing that for her safety, but it was a new experience to go out in public and be so visibly um, an amputee. But you know, in the end, I actually found it to be really empowering and it gave me a huge boost of confidence because it was honestly the first time in my life that I felt like I didn't have to hide anything about myself. So it ended up being a good thing. The limb difference really didn't play into it too much for me. Um, there was, because of the age in which my wife and I decided to really seek help with the fertility, they did a lot of genetic testing and they had assured her that it would not be anything genetic. Um, and I always, I always jokingly said it wouldn't matter anyway. Um, I would love to have a limb different kid. Um, so when Hannah was born, she had been somehow kind of laying on her right arm in a weird way um, while she was in utero and when she was born she actually had this weird purple look like like the blood supply had been cut off to her arm and I, I remember them whisking her away and taking her over to these little heat lamps and um, sorry we be I again um, so they, they, they took her off and they they had her over at the heat lamps and they were kind of whispering and stuff and I just said, I said, I said, it's no big deal. If if there's something wrong with her arm, we'll we'll be okay. And then, was I a little disappointed when she was 100 percent? Absolutely, but glad at the same time. It didn't, not in a not in a big way, like not in a way that was like, do we do this or not? But more in a way that was like, how is this? Like, am I gonna have to kind of think about this? Um, so like one of the um one of the things when i was pregnant you know when you're starting to get all the stuff right and i took uh the pregnant the first time um so i was taking mat leave so i was going to be the one with the baby the most whatever um and so things like stroller shopping and buying a car seat was like oh i 
actually need to think about this. So because like so many things have two different buttons and you have to flip it here and hold it there and it's like if I can't do it then it doesn't make sense. Um, but it was weird because I haven't really had a lot of those experiences in my life. So to think about it, it was kind of, I mean I've definitely had kind of incidents over the course, I was pregnant when I was about 30. So kind of over the first 30 years, you know, here and there, but like going into motherhood, it was a lot of that because it is, it's a very physical job, right? Like being pregnant is physical and caring for the baby is physical and all of that. And it's like, um, how am I gonna kind of think about that? But it wasn't, it wasn't scary. It was just like, okay, let's, figure this out and let's go and try every single stroller and every single car seat and we will find one. That's awesome. Like, yeah, I didn't think about it until somebody mentioned someone who also has a limb difference, another person I've chatted with about the importance of like for a stroller to have adjustable um, handles, like yeah. that like can go up or down depending yeah. on your height. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Cause you could rank your shoulder if you're trying to, you know, so that's, yeah. Very, very good point. <laughs> yeah, and so when I was, so after we bought like our stroller, that's one of the big purchases, and then later on people would ask me like, do you like your stroller? Would you recommend it? And I would say, yes, but I bought it because it only weighs this much so that I can carry it with one hand. It's one hand collapsible and it fits the car seat that is also one hand. So it's like, I do, but you might find something better. I did think about it. I mean, I tried to think through what it might be like. I tried to anticipate how it might be different for me. There aren't a lot of resources for what's it like to parent with a limb difference. And, you know, and there's just not much parenting disability resources out there. I think that's changing. But um, so I thought about it. I also tried not to think about it because I, I wanted to be a mom and I wanted to have a kid. And I was like, whatever, we'll figure it out. Just see, we'll just see. <laughs> Did you have any any fears about being a dad with a limb difference, either for your kids or for yourself? So I think my biggest fear would be her friends making fun of her for having a dad. Um, and, and that would be the same for any of my children. But um, it, it's kind of interesting how quickly a child will defend their parent. Um, and, and, and Hannah now stands up for the underdog all the time. So it's kind of cool that she's uh, kind of grown and blossomed into this little um, kid that'll take charge and, and stand up for the, the little guy, you know? She's had some friends that questioned about her dad and, and you know, why he had one arm. And, you know, he, she's always been their first one to defend. So That is so cool. That's wonderful. Yeah, lots of fears. <laughs> I, I, I think about my limb difference not think about it is because I was afraid that it might be too hard and I'm not sure what you like like maybe just like slipping into depression <laughs> or or you know like the, the, my baby lying on the floor helpless like I don't know what I thought too hard would be but I I was afraid that it would be so challenging that I would feel like I couldn't do it um and I would kind of push that fear aside, but again, because I just couldn't quite picture it. And all the parents I know um, at the time, certainly, I didn't know, I don't know if I knew any other di uh, disabled parents, and so I just was kind of, I was just afraid that it would be too hard, like, to be honest. I don't, I don't think so. It was, I've always been the type to kind of like face challenges head on and nobody is going to tell me that I can't do something and that's basically the best way to get me to do something is to say that you think I can't do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I will show you, I will have this baby and it will be the best baby there ever was. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, so not particularly, it was kind of socially, there's a certain part like you know, at the time I kind of had my group of friends, my group of friends have known me for a while and I knew that becoming a mom, you'll make a lot of new, you make the mom friends, you know. Um, and it would be this whole new set of social situations 
and also you'll be in it with your baby so that you just had so it was kind of there's a little bit of maybe apprehension of like I just don't know like unknown but at the same time that's what having a like having a baby is all having your first baby is all unknown so it it just it was just kind of all a part of that probably yeah no that makes that makes so much sense do you know um the moth podcast no have you heard of it no it's a, it's a it's a storytelling podcast and so it's just kind of all stories of all walks of life whatever and there was one on there and it was about it was a mom who had a limb difference and she had worn a prosthetic like her whole life right so that was her thing and then when she had her baby she was telling this story about trying to change her baby's diaper and holding her baby down with her very heavy solid prosthetic and having and kind of having this like light bulb moment of like this isn't working and having to reevaluate her relationship with it and all of that and realizing that she can you know it's okay to take it off and try things and whatever and just like I'm sure you can understand that you know people have different relationships with these things right absolutely so that was really interesting to hear because I have I have prosthetics I haven't worn I I could probably count the days in my life when I've worn them um, on my one hand, can we make hand jokes? <laughs> of course we can. Yeah, <laughs> good. They come out like unintentionally. So because, you know, I spent the first 30 years of my life not having a ton of big challenges with it. So I wasn't really in that headspace anyway. So, and also like done everything up to this point. How hard can this be? <laughs> Famous last words. Yeah, right? That makes so much sense. Like, you know, we're people in general, but especially folks who have to find different ways of doing stuff are so yeah. adaptable, especially if it's something you're born with. Um, yes, and, yeah, and that's my case. Yeah, yeah me, me as yeah. well. And you're right, like I think people that have grown up in communities where they experienced a lot of harassment or bullying um, will have a different relationship with their bodies versus those yes. Yeah. who haven't and lots so many things come into play i'm glad that your experiences so far have been generally good yeah and i, I mean i think at this point that i'm i mean one of your questions was and i'm sure we'll get to that was about um anecdotes with the general public and there are some awful things that have been said but i think because i'm just used to it i can say like whatever you know like you don't know me. That's your problem. Like how you, the fact that you feel that way is you're trying to throw your issues at me and no thanks. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I had a lot of fears about myself. I think I worried about her because you know, when you're a kid with a limb difference, you get inundated by all of these questions all of the time. And I was worried about her having to deal with that as a kid because of me. Um, so that was probably my biggest fear. But honestly, I have been so impressed with Kaylee. Um, her just level of empathy and her ability to just explain so matter-of-factly about my limb difference and then move on. Um, it's just been really impressive, honestly. And I feel like she uh, she just has so much compassion and consideration for people with all kinds of differences. Um, because I think she's grown up with someone who has a difference. So. She just naturally knows how to treat people with respect, and I appreciate that about her. That is beautiful. That's so cool. How has it been for you, Kaylee? Does that sound about right? Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Stumbum Kitchen, Stumbum Kitchen, gluten free, vegan, and eats a stumptastic treat. for two. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> so gassy when you're pregnant. Like, what? Oh, God. Holy yes. crap. Whoa, look at my boobs. <laughs> they are falling out. Mm -hmm.